Forgotten Crimes Remembered Victims Number 1. The Murders of Jan Van Kalk and Annette Bello. Sadly, some crimes are mostly forgotten, murderers never facing justice for their vile deeds, and the victims in danger of being dishonored once more by being lost to history. Details are scarce in many forgotten crimes, but what little is known must be passed on so at least the victims can be remembered. Jan van Kalk was born September 17, 1897 in Brussels, Belgium to Mother Françoise van Kalk and an unnamed father who had abandoned them, for he and the mother were not married. All that is known of him is that he worked as a typographer for the Le Soir newspaper. Although Jan lived with her grandparents, she visited her mother daily. Her grandfather usually walked her to her mother's home, but due to her grandfather being forced to work late, her grandmother allowed her to go alone. She left at 6.30 p.m. on the evening of February 7, 1906, but never made it to her mother's house located at the corner of Baudouin Boulevard. Around 11.45 p.m., Joseph Eilenbosch, who worked at the Théâtre de l'Alhambra, and his son, found a strange package, described as thick paper tied with hemp cord, on the sidewalk outside 22 Rue de Hirondelles, and sent for the police. Arriving on scene were Gustave Van Damme and Pierre Noel, who took the suspicious package to the police station at Place de Nouveau Marché au Grand. They brought it to the attention of the department chief, a man named Dismet. The three police officers proceeded to inspect and open the package. First they saw a blue pea coat, and then a checkered dress, but when they removed the clothes from the parcel, they found Jan's corpse, minus her legs, which had been surgically removed at the groin. It was said that the body was still warm. Soon after, two unidentified men arrived at the police station and reported Jan missing. When they described what Jan had been wearing when she left her grandparents' home, the victim was quickly identified. Jan's mother fainted when told the news. The autopsy revealed she had died by choking on her own vomit after someone forced her to drink a large amount of alcohol. She had also been raped. Time of death was estimated to have been between 8 and 9 p.m. The coroner determined that the amputation of the legs showed enough surgical skill that police suspected a doctor might have done it, although the coroner also speculated that a skilled butcher could have done it. The package had been made from pages from the journal de Perry, and pages dated January 12th and 27th of Le Soir, the same newspaper her father worked for. Police searched for her legs, even dragged the canals, but could not find them. They did find a blood-stained shirt on Chaussée de Wavre. The hunt for her murderer led to the detainment of unnamed suspects, one only listed as a Spaniard, and the other as an Algerian. Both were quickly released with no charges filed. A known beggar, who sometimes worked as a butcher's apprentice, John Many was arrested but released without charge. Investigators briefly viewed a one Dr. Nissen as a person of interest, but that led nowhere. A dog handler, Agent Librax, and his dog, Follette, traced the girls sent from the body dump site back to the grandparents' house, but found nothing. On February 11, an estimated 10,000 people attended Jan's funeral. The burgomaster of Brussels, Emile de Motte, himself had collected Jan's body from the mortuary at Saint Pierre Hospital and led the funeral procession, which included a police honor guard. The police guard was quickly forced into a protective detail around the girl's coffin as an angry crowd gathered, demanding answers. She was taken to Evere and buried in the Brussels cemetery. On February 15, Jan's shoes were found near the Royal Stuyvenberg farm. On the 16th, a gardener found her legs wrapped in two parcels in the farm park. Even after the Belgian government offered a 20,000 Belgian franc reward, and police offered leniency to anyone indirectly involved if they came forward, police received no further clues. In 1909, a Parisian lawyer, Louis Frank, published an article stating 20 failures of the police during the investigation. Possibly the most damning failure of police was for not following up on the promising lead of a witness who claimed to have seen Jan at around 7 p.m. being led in the opposite direction from her mother's house by a man she appeared to trust. 
The witness was a friend of Jan's, ignored by investigators because she was just a little girl. Owner of the Le Soir newspaper, Emile Rossell collected donations with the goal of funding a monument to Jan, who had become known as the Little Angel of Rue de Hirondelles. Another murder sometimes comes up in relation to Jan's. And there is even less information about this crime. Less than two years later, on December 1, 1907, six-year-old Annette Bello was murdered. Annette and her older brother were at the Place de Brucaire in Brussels when a man approached them. The brother said the man was 35 to 40 years old and asked if the boy would do him a favor and run to buy him cigarettes. The brother later recalled that the man said, Leave your little sister with me, you will go faster. He also said he would pay the boy for his troubles with candy. Annette's brother returned with the cigarettes, but Annette and the stranger were gone. The following day, Annette's corpse was found in a meadow behind the veterinary school at Anderlecht, Belgium, one of the 19 municipalities comprising the Brussels capital region, near the Gare du Midi, a train station. She had been raped and strangled. Sadly, I can find no more information about the murder, but it appears that at some time Annette's grave was vandalized. The angel once there must have been damaged. Belgian street singers often sang about the murders. The following is from a song about Annette, but it is befitting for both girls. Goodbye Anna, you sweet little one, thou who so cruelly disappears, little angels who live above you offer you your martyr's crowns.